Well, it really could be one of the most daring feats in space exploration history. Yes, today, the European Space Agency is landing a tiny spacecraft on a comet 300 million miles from Earth. A few minutes ago, the United States ambassadors to every country in the world told the leaders of those nations what I am about to tell you. Two American astronomers, Marcus Wolf, and Leo Beeman, working on a mountaintop in Arizona, saw some nice guy that caused them great concern. Comet. But the comet was, well, there was a remote possibility that the comet was on a path that could bring it into direct contact with the Earth. A comet made of ice and dust is moving at 41,000 miles per hour through space. On its tail, the Rosetta probe belonging to the European Space Agency. It's been on a 10-year mission to make contact with the comet in just hours. So for the past eight months, the United States and Russia have been building the largest spaceship ever constructed. It's being built in orbit around the Earth, and we call it the Messiah. The Messiah. The Messiah. The Rosetta probe belonging to the European Space Agency. It's been on a 10-year mission to make contact with the comet in just hours. When Napoleon Bonaparte invaded Egypt in 1798, he did more than just conquer a country. He uncovered a lost civilization. Egypt had been virtually closed to Europeans for centuries, and when the French saw the pyramids of Giza, they were astonished. There were three inscriptions on the stone. The mysterious ancient hieroglyphs at the top, then another unknown text, and at the bottom, ancient Greek. Along with his soldiers, Napoleon had taken an army of scholars to unravel Egypt's ancient culture, including antiquarians, artists, and linguists. It says here, that all three scripts are saying the same thing. So by translating the Greek, they would know what the hieroglyphs said. How are you? Everything okay? AJ left us in his room. Told him I needed to turn in. You can look at this. Look at how damn done him. Look at how damn done him. Look at how damn done him. She's some girl who was an expert on Lord of the Flies. She's some girl who was an expert on Lord of the Flies. She's some girl who was an expert on Lord of the Flies. The signature characteristic of uh, our... <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to start over. Uh, I'm going to start at I Will Contrast. Hey, get out of here. That's the most persistent fly I've ever seen. Nice. Now, where were we? 
That was yeah. pretty impressive, wasn't it? I got it. I got the sucker. What do you think, Gibbs? That is very good. It's on. It's right there. It's right there. You want to film that? There it is. The French had, however, thought to make copies of the stone. Their finest linguists and code breakers in Paris were already trying to crack it. This next story is really going to stir up some controversy. Absolutely. A lot of people will be talking about this. It's a new book making some shocking claims about the life of Jesus Christ. According to the Lost Gospel, Jesus married Mary Magdalene and they had two children. The authors even say they have evidence to back up their claims. They spent six years working on the book, basing their arguments on an ancient manuscript dating back nearly 1,500 years, one they say they found in a British library translating the text from an Aramaic dialect into English. I remember reading about it when it launched and uh, the arrival date was so far in the future, and now it's so exciting that we're actually getting there. The comet is four and a half billion years old. Nobody's ever tried to land on a body of this kind with material flowing away, with gravity that changes all over the place. Alexander the Great was the king of Macedon and was undefeated in battle and acknowledged as a military genius. He took Mesopotamia in modern-day Iraq at the Battle of Gaugamela and captured Babylon in 331 BC. He was now the leader of the Greeks, overlord of Asia Minor, pharaoh of Egypt and king of Persia. He was just 25 years old. Alexander died in Babylon in 323 BC, aged 32. The Rosetta probe will launch a 220-pound mini lander towards the comet. The trick will be for the lander to find a smooth area without rocks or a slope. Once contact is made, two harpoons will be fired into the comet along with screws to secure the lander. You 
children didn't bring any real books to read. Did you know that? I brought Moby Dick and Huckleberry Finn. Call me Ishmael. Anyway, let's get started. Moby Dick, chapter one. <laughs> Call me Ishmael. Even actor William Shatner, who played Star Trek Captain James Kirk, is following the mission. Good luck, Rosetta. I am so excited. As President Obama continues his Asia trip, it seems he's offended many in his host country of China. It's not his policies that are putting people off. Instead, it's this. Video broadcast live on state-run news agency CCTV showed President Obama chewing gum. One trillion celestial balls of ice, dust, complex molecules left over from the birth of our solar system, once thought of as messengers of doom and destruction, and yet so enchanting that we were to catch one. A staggeringly ambitious plan. Are you talking about the Rosetta mission? We harnessed whole planets and their gravity to chase down the comet. On the back of the dollar bill, you'll see the symbol on the left-hand side of the bill, which is uh, Anuit Coeptus, which means our enterprise is now a success, or our enterprise is crowned with success. What enterprise are you talking about? Novas Ordo Seclorum. Novas is novas, meaning new. Ordo is order, and seclorum is where we get the word secular, meaning the world. So it's new order of the world, the new world order. There were bigger missions after. Yes. It was the first one to catch a comet. Ambition. Stubbornness. Nothing has changed. We fall, we pick ourselves up again, and we adapt.